to the third edition of the Osasui Show Symposium, themed the 21st century woman and her role in national development. You may all rise for the national anthem. Well, Your Excellencies, we will need to quickly do something, and I've been told that the next item is a simple one. It's simple because our opening remarks will be done by two people. The first of them is an 11-year-old, and I looked through history and discovered that Cassidy Goldstein invented crayon holder when she was age 11. Ben Franklin was 11 when he invented the swim flippers, and there are about 20 other inventors who made life different and positive just when they were 11. So we've picked this 11-year-old girl to come over and just talk to us in an opening remarks. So distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, she's at year eight at Statwright School. Let's specially recognize Zipporah Egenegi. Please put your hands together for her as she comes up. Can we clap for her, please? If you cannot remember where you were at age 11, you should clap more. Good morning, everyone. My name is Zipporah Egenege, and I am 11 years old. I attend Star Trek School's day secondary. I am here to talk about the girl child. It might interest you to note that I'm the only girl child from a family of seven. Some of you might be wondering, oh, she's just a girl. Well, I am a girl today, a woman in the near future. First of all, I would like to define the term girl child. The girl child is a biological female offspring from the birth through 18 years of age. This is the age before one becomes a young adult. During this period, the child is malleable, builds and develops her personality and character. She is very dependent on the significance of others, those on whom she models her behavior through observation, repetition, and imitation. Her physical, mental, social, spiritual, and emotional development starts and gets to the peak at the young adult stage. The girl child goes to school, helps with the housework, work in factories, make friends, care for elders and the younger family members, and prepares herself to take on the responsibilities of adulthood. Girls play multiple roles in the household, society, and the economy. Upholding the rights of the girl child has increased support through the global adoption of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, domesticated in Nigeria as the Child Rights Act of 2003 as well as through the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals target of increasing equality between girls and boys' educational attainments. I have taken note of girls, now women, who are doing so well. They are consistently impacting lives. They are strong women in spheres of influence, doing their best to make the world a better place. Some of these women who, for me, our huge sources of inspiration include Mrs. Amaka Ndoma Egba, founder and director of Star Trek Schools, Ms. Anui Ola Olaniyi, leadership and life skill coach and founder, 
Air Woman Development, and of course, Chief Miss Osasui Benidian. And by the way, you look beautiful today. In line with the theme, the 21st century woman and her role in national development, you all will agree with the fact that women can effectively play a significant role in nation building. When she's educated, when girls, women are educated, there is a greater chance of escaping poverty, leading healthier and more productive lives, and raising the standard of living children, families, and communities. As I round up, I would like to emphasize that more needs to be done in terms of ensuring freedom from all forms of discrimination against the girl child. Governments and societies must do the needful if true freedom is to be won. Policies have been put in place. Promises have been made. Now it is time to put the words to action and make real progress. Thank you, Chief Ms. Osasuig Benidion, the convener of the Osasucho Symposium, for the opportunity to share this speech. Once again, I am Zipora Egenege from Star Tribe Schools Day Secondary. Thank you for listening. Is the government taking in rural areas to make the women safe? Ah, what action is the government taking in the rural areas to ensure women are safe? Government. <laughs> I believe it is the responsibility of every governor to ensure that the women and the girls are safe. I believe it's the responsibility of every governor to ensure that especially students are safe, teachers are equipped to, to teach them properly. I believe it's also the responsibility of the governor to ensure that there, is, um, there are jobs, because when there are jobs, there's a possibility that uh, the rate of crime will go down. I also believe that is the responsibility of the governor. If anything happens to the girl child in the house, whether she's been abused, you know, by guardians in school or anywhere, the governor should ensure that the perpetrator, the person who um, is is being horrible to the to the child, is punished properly. I also believe that uh, it would be good for governors to engage students, girls, once in a while, just create an atmosphere like Ms. Sasu has done for us here and have a session where they can talk to you. But I also believe it is your responsibility. If the governor of the state is not doing well and is not doing what he or she says, well, we don't have a female governor yet, if, if he's not doing what he said he's going to do, you can start encouraging daddy and mommy. Maybe when election comes, maybe we shouldn't vote for this governor. Maybe we should vote for this other governor. You know, and there are no women who also want to contest. Or let's look for the men. If there are no women, let's look for the men who said they are going to take care of women, give them good um, hospital facilities, ensure the budget when mommy is pregnant or when she goes to a hospital, ensure that budget is spent properly, ensure the hospitals are equipped, um, ensure teachers. So, you know, you can start influencing daddy and mommy and say, I don't think we should go vote for this person. I think we should vote for that person. But when the governor is also doing a good job, I think it's also good for us to publicly acknowledge the governor. I hope I've tried. Thank you. My name is Zawadi Gowan, and my question is for Ms. Anuli. Uh, my question is, what is to be done about females that believe in male superiority? Hmm. From a boy. Hmm. Hmm. Um, is that what I've been tutoring you in school? <laughs> it's a question. What do I think about females, girls, believe in male superiority. I think that those 
girls who may believe that have been indoctrinated to think that way. Um, I think that again, if we go back to the facets of our society, the culture, the religion, maybe again, where the immediate um, growing up days are from. They have seen that being uh, played out. They have seen that being created. They've seen that being acted out. So I want to say that the realities of all girls are not the same. So it would not be fair to generalize. Um, the reality of a, of a girl who grows up in, if you like, an elitist background it be slight, will be slightly different from a, a, a girl who grows up in a, in a rural area. So it may, be, it may be different. But I would just want to peg it that depends on what, where they're growing up from, what they've seen, what they've learned, what they've imbibed. That is literally what they will act out eventually, unless there's a re-education, there's a relearning, there's an unlearning of what should be the, the norm for both the men and women. Thank you.